I'm starting this review with a visit into my loft, which for many years has been used for storage. During this time the model railway has been sadly neglected, until now. The control panel was powered up and cleaned up, and the access aisle was once again free of boxes. The majority of the layout wiring had endured the varied temperatures, but there's still some work to be done, once I remember where all the wires go. A rolling stock taking exercise then followed, with the locos left out ready for servicing and repairs. The internet, and in particular eBay, has made finding spares easier and more cost effective than it was 20 years ago. A recent purchase of a Blue Class 33 rekindled the desire to operate the layout once again, but first the track needs cleaning, and then inspecting. After many hours and a fair amount of expense, I managed to service and repair my increasing pool of over 50 working diesel locos. Meanwhile, on the big railway, the latest in passenger travel awaits departure at Darlington for a speedy journey to London. By contrast, the next train in Platform 1 is of decidedly older stock, with two repainted 47s in charge of a Statesman Special from Chesterley Street to Appleby.
Today's technology has greatly improved the filming experience by having live updates and train locations readily available. There's even the added bonus of being able to see these trains on live webcam feeds, such as Railcam. Here we see the Statesman Special departing from a much streamlined York station. And a Zuma awaits departure time in the Bay platform, as two West Coast Railway 47s stand idle in the holding sidings. Thirty-seven two six four enjoys a rare trip on mainline rails as it's taken from the moors to Leeds for tyre turning. The Branch Line Society succeeded in running a special from Derby to Whitby after the previous year's attempt was rerouted to Saltburn. Given the name the second bite, there's a rare Class 50 appearance on the Esk Valley branch. Another special in the area, heading to Whitby from Dundee, is the distinctive Blue Pullman HST.
featured more extensively on a separate DVD, is my driver experience day at the Wensleydale Railway. Two converted Class 69s had been working the weed killing train in Scotland before hitching a ride back to Doncaster. Also returning to Doncaster after a ballast drop along the Esk Valley line are Class 70s 809 and 801. Four hours later, I was waiting with others on Thornaby Station for the Branch Line Society special to enter Tees Yard. However, a signalling fault meant it waited outside the station for 50 minutes, eventually being rerouted via the platform line to Newport East Junction. Class 66s had originated in Doncaster, with three of them hitching a ride to work the following week's Bowlby trains. Waiting in Tees Yard were a number of other Class 66s. 66160, seen here on the far left, was used to drag the train back into the yard, as shown by these photos from social media. 66111 and 067 then top and tailed for a two hour late book visit to the Wilton site. 2023, a year of notable celebrations that included the coronation of King Charles III and the 100th birthday of railway royalty, the Flying Scotsman. The two came together on the 12th of June to commemorate the 50th anniversary of the North Yorkshire Moors Railway. The Royal Train, hauled by Scotsman, passed through Teesside on its way to Pickering, but unfortunately I had other commitments. Matthew and Sophie were moving into their new home, and it was all hands on deck this day. I couldn't let this momentous occasion pass without a mention, so here are some of the images that appeared on social media. Sixty-seven double O five assisted with the royal train duties, whilst fifty-seven O one two shadowed its journey as standby local. 
The empty train returned along the Esk Valley branch after the king alighted at Pickering and made his way to Scarborough, where he reboarded for his return journey. Chirping their way through Nunthorpe are 20s 189 and 142. They're returning light to Tisley after taking 31 466 to its new home on the Moors Railway the day before. It's not very often that Nunthorpe station reverberates to the sound of 20s. Sixty nine double one, the first of the rebuilt class fifty sixes, heads the weed killing train from Doncaster to Tees Yard, but it didn't stay in the area for long. There's plenty of sheds on display in Tees Yard, five of them in fact on the east side of the bridge, quietly yinging away. Whilst over on the west side is 60023, newly named to celebrate the King's coronation and humorously referred to as Ying Charles. And now for a bit of plane spotting. A 
An EasyJet A320 spent the day on practice manoeuvres around Teesside Airport, and I didn't get to Yarm quick enough to film the Saltburn Rail Tour's empty stock move from Carnforth. Even a quick dash to Middlesbrough wasn't quick enough. This is what I should have seen, as captured by Paul Merton. Eagles Cliff's recently refurbished station and car park witnesses the departure of a regular northern service from Saltburn to Bishop Auckland. Heading in the other direction is a Grand Central service from King's Cross to Sunderland. Making its way from Edinburgh to Middlesbrough sidings is a network rail DMU. Hauling a short consist of concrete sleepers from Doncaster to Tyne Yard is appropriately named 66719 Metroland. Two track machines make their way from Chesterfield to Chevington Loop as part of the Ashington to Newcastle Passenger Service Restoration Project. Hired in DCR Loco 56091 heads Colas Rail's recently introduced 6M44 empty bitumen tank service from Preston to Port Clarence. There's a brief stop to pick up a pilot, not an easy jet one, before making a spirited departure to the branch. I made a more leisurely departure to film its arrival at Port Clarence, just a short gondola ride across the River Tees, that is when the transport of bridge was working. With an uncertain future, the majestic landmark frames the 56's slow arrival into the run round loop.
also there to film the train's arrival, are two fellow photographers. In the t-shirt is social media administrator Alex Eyre. Here's his shot. After running round, the loco propels the 11 tankers the short distance into the Phillips loading compound in the shadow of the troubled Teesside biomass power station. The Port Clarence area was once a very busy place and signs of the many sidings can still be seen. Built in 1911, the transporter bridge hasn't been in use since 2019 due to safety concerns.
66091 patiently waits time with empty ballast wagons from Tyne Yard to the Red Car Mineral Terminal. The Saltburn Rail Tour's annual weekend outing arrives for an early morning pickup with the lucky elderly punters enjoying a stylish ride to Bournemouth on the sunny south coast. Their return journey three days later didn't go smoothly. A late departure, rerouting and local problems meant the arrival back on Teesside was an hour late and in the dark. The signal box at Bellasis Lane once controlled the busy rail traffic in and out of the ICI Billingham complex and along the Port Clarence branch to Seal Sands. The new bitumen tank service to Preston is now the only regular user, running on Wednesdays, Thursdays and Fridays. 7804 returns with 10 empty tankers and slows for the single line token. Rail traffic along the Stillington branch is sporadic 
and I thought I'd found a good spot at the Boghole Farm Crossing near Morden. That is, until the train approached. Sixty-six four three zero heads of ballast working from Redcar Mineral Terminal to Tyne Yard. In 2023, the North Yorkshire Moors Railway celebrated its 50th anniversary year, and I've known Roy and Keith for most of those years. With Roy deciding to emigrate to Thailand, we arranged a railway-themed send-off, the last hurrah. We started our adventure at Gromont on a drizzly British summer's morning. BR Standard Tank 80136 arrives from Pickering at 10.25 with a Whitby bound train that the waiting class 25 will take forward. Waiting to enter the station is Southern Railway's Schools Class 926 Repton with a Whitby to Pickering service. We're letting the train take the strain up the 1 in 49 gradient to Gothland on the first leg of our journey. However, it's school holiday time and an already crowded train means we might have to stand. There's no time to hang around. The lads have got the tickets, so it's all aboard. Peter in his usual position. <laughs> Roy pretending he's not with us. <laughs> where, are, where are we been there? We're uh, just leaving Groomont, heading towards Gorford. One in 49. One in 49. Is that the price? <laughs> The loco is making a spirited climb along the Ask Valley, and there's plenty of smoke box smut to try and avoid.
approaching journey's end. Well, at least by train. But will I have time to get to the road bridge before the train continues on to Pickering? Yes, I did make it. Hourly services were operating during the line's quite appropriate goal timetable.
Compo and Cleggy are taking a well-deserved rest at Esk Valley Cottages, a remote community not far from Gromont. Three of the dwellings have steam railway names, harking back to Lancashire engine sheds of the past. The lunchtime diner returns from Pickering behind the G27. The cottages were once part of a Victorian self-sustaining community serving the local ironstone facility, Home House Mine. Two terraces of miners' cottages, a mine manager's house, a small chapel and a group of craftsmen's houses can still be seen today. AWS livery 31466 had arrived a month earlier on loan, but a change of ownership means it's now part of the North Yorkshire Moors Railway's home diesel fleet. Compo and Clegg have beaten me back and look in need of a rest. 37264 returns from Pickering with a terminating service. Roy had spotted a familiar face in the cab, so we went to check. He's not in here. What about the other cab? Ah, there he is. John Mallam, my driving instructor on the Wensleydale Railway back in April. So Nigel Gresley heads to the Moors Railway for their autumn steam gala and, as the season changes, there's a return of the railhead treatment trains. DRS Class 66s and 68s are regularly used on 3J77 and 3J78, the daily run from Kingmower to Nunthorpe and back.
The skyline at South Bank Station is now totally devoid of all the once proud industrial structures. The railhead treatment train continues to Kingmore after a reversal at Grangetown. The monopoly of DRS liveried locos is broken a few weeks later by the use of Trans Pennine liveried 68s. A number of these have been returned to DRS after their use on Pennine services to Scarborough comes to an end. All TPE 68 haul trains ended with the December timetable change following a review by the government's operator of last resort, who took over from TPE following their poor performances. Sixty six five to war heads back to Tees Dock from Hartlepool Docks on a route learning run in advance of a new traffic flow of tunnel segments for the London to Birmingham HS two project. James Cook Hospital Station was opened in 2014 and now has 18 trains a day stopping here. One that doesn't stop is the RHTT. The line to Whitby also sees sporadic specials, including this one from Potter's Bar, speeding up the bank. Just up the bank is Nuntorp Station, where the RHTTs reverse. An early morning commuter service departs as the 66 gets a change of driver. <laughs> 